So, hello and welcome people of the internet um, to our second quarantine live lecture series. And um, if you thought it would just be like a little thing just in Europe, no, you're wrong. Already we go and go <laughs> worldwide and we have super special guests here this time from Mexico. And we have Palma from Mexico City. We have Ilse and Diego here. And yeah, so first of all, welcome to this Quarantine Life lecture series. I guess you can imagine why we're doing this. Um, we're sort of all in quarantine at the moment and our home becomes our fitness studio, our yoga studio, our office. And now it should also become a lecture hall since we cannot go to see all the interesting architecture lectures and then why not make them globally and why not show it to all the world. And maybe just very quickly about who we are, the first introduction. So we're Mies TV. We are an international architecture platform that started as architecture students. And um, it started off in Vienna, in Austria. But then we soon had a team in England, now in London. We had a team and um, we still have a team in Mexico, actually, Mexico City. Big shout out to Gonzalo, who told us immediately, yeah, there is this cool office called Palma that we need to um, show. So we have also a team in Mexico City, we have a team in Paris, and then we also had productions in Netherlands and Germany and Slovakia. And yes, so this is who we are and you can see all of our interviews on our websites as well. Then um, before I introduce Palma, I want to introduce um, you, the audience who's watching. Um, on our Instagram story, let me just check on my phone, we asked where people are watch watching from. Um, so we have Deja watching from Montenegro, we have Sebastian watching from Uruguay, we have Robocop watching from London, we have Emma watching from Transylvania, people from Peru watching from Turkey, Philippines, Luxembourg, Romania, Brussels, Montenegro and someone wrote from home and from your website. And then we have Portugal, Greece, Switzerland, Amsterdam. So welcome all of you. Um, to this live lecture series and um, still let us know in the comment section below on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, where you're watching from. And during the lecture of Palma, make sure to write your questions in it and then we will ask them live straight all the way to Mexico to Ilse and Diego. So, and now let's introduce Palma. So they're a young and um, super interesting office from Mexico City. They were founded by four people from Ilse, Regina, Diego and Juan. And they don't only do beautiful collages, they also do beautiful projects, private but also publicly what I've seen. They have sort of like a pop-up playground that they did at a fountain. I don't know if they will show it or not. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much for joining this lecture. And um, I would say you can start with your lecture and then at the end we will have a small talk about your projects. So very well, welcome. Thank you very much for inviting, inviting us and hello to everyone all over the globe. <laughs> yes, it's, it's great being here. I, um, I think this kind of like uh, new ways of communication or like, like uh, with all this happening around the globe, I think it's, it's important that we continue our day to day even though we're at our home right now, not at our office, but we saw, for example, uh, last week's lecture with Pala from Mexico all the way to Porto. So I think even though it's, it's, a, it's a difficult time, I think it's also a time where we can learn from this. And, and I think uh, maybe this will change the way things are going to be made in, in this near future, right? Um, so well, thank you everyone for being, for being here. Uh, we're going to start uh, our lecture. We always like to, to start a uh, conference or our lecture with these images. The image on the right is is, is the four of us, it's the Palma team, it's uh, Juan Luis, Regina, me and Jose. And on the left side, it's an image from Ciudad Universitaria, which is the National University campus where we study. Um, Yes, that we, we really like uh, showing that image because we are really proud of our school. It's the place where we met. It's the place where we all uh, started working together and at, um, 
let me just close with the microphone. And where we started working together in, in doing school projects, then we started doing these competitions in the afternoon, and finally we decided to fund Palma. So yes, we are really, as I already said, uh, proud of this, this university and what it has did for us. Mm, then this, this slide, um, we wanted to show you the contrast of the places where we have most of our work, even though we have several projects across the Mexican territory, we focus mainly in Sayulita, which is the, the image on the right, and in Mexico City, which is the one on the left. And we want to show you to show some of the contrast. And in one hand, we have Mexico City with more than 22 million uh, people uh, living here, almost no space. So we, in, in Mexico City, we work most in like small interventions. The barriers to make these art-related projects in galleries or exhibitions. And in Sayulita, which is a coast, a little coast town with less than 3,000 inhabitants, um, we we have more space. We are doing other types of projects, more residential. Um, so yes, we just wanted to show you these images so you have a little bit of the context of where are we coming from and where are we working? Yeah, so, um, uh, in this slide, uh, we, we wanted to show you our, our main instruments for not only for working the breaks, but also to show them and to understand them in, in different ways. Uh, so we always make use of one more than the other, depending on a specific uh, on the specifics of the project, on the client, and also of the time that we have available. Uh, we are a very small studio, actually, it's only the four of us, and we like grow depending on the situation and on the specific time of the of the of the office that we're at. So we're mostly four of us, and we hire uh, people and collaborators, uh, which have been always great uh, to work with. Uh, so. As we are a small project, we, we are a small office, we cannot always make uh, like a lot of material, right? But this is uh, this definitely these are three main um, instruments, which like the, the 2D uh, plan, uh, the collage, which has been instrumental for uh, for us in many ways. And uh, we always love to do two models because we really think uh, there's no better way to, to understand like the, the project to understand the scale of it to understand the proportions of it so we every time that we have time we like to 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 do models and uh, this is one of our, our latest projects is uh, a little two two unit um house in in sayulita and for this one we haven't made them all yet but we uh we did this image of these collages that all of you probably are already familiar with and what we like about them is that they can show uh, in a very simple way and uh, like get closer to the atmosphere that we want to portray and to some scenarios that we imagine the project will bring uh, without compromising full way as you compromise with the rendering. And also because <laughs> we are much more skilled with this type of representation that with the uh, it's like super realistic rendering. This, this last slide we're showing because this is like an example of what I was talking about with the model. Uh, we think this is a project that never got completed uh, that we did a few years ago. And we really like it because uh, for us, the, the model was like the starting point. And it's like a very simple way of showing uh, like what, yeah, the intentions of the project. So we only have two materials in it and it, it shows like this, this plane and this, uh, for example, this little courtyard, and then it translates, as you can see, very similarly to the Finnish plan. Uh, okay, well, so we are gonna start showing some of these images. We don't, we don't wanna make this um, a regular presentation of, of the series is called Beyond the Bill. We didn't wanna show uh, like, and our projects in a typical way, like the process of how they were developed. We wanted to, we, we started talking about this lecture, we decided to show some projects that for us have this, uh, we call it like key moments or detonating moments 
that as Ilson said, it could be either a model or a collage or a plan. Sometimes it's a it's a, um, a reference image, and for us, all these goes hand in hand. For example, uh, for this, it was a it was an open competition. We did I think um, almost two years uh, or less, something yes, less than two years, and. This competition, the main idea was to develop um, a playground for kids in an underdeveloped, underdeveloped area in Mexico City. Sorry to interrupt. They, they are telling us, telling us they cannot hear us very well, so maybe we let <laughs> get, I don't know. But uh, I, I'm going to try to get closer to the microphone, so when I speak, um, let me see if it's it's working now. Palma, Palma background team. <laughs> Okay, uh, so yes, this competition, uh, when, when we started the, the, the project, uh, the, organize, the, the people organizing the competition uh, did this series of workshops with the kids uh, that were going to use the, the project. And the main characteristic that we find out was that the kids were really into playing with water. In Mexico City, uh, different to other cities around the world, we have this strange relationship with the water. So we don't have that many uh, like public uh, water spaces, or for example, you cannot go into the fountain during the summer as it happens in, in other cities. So we wanted to bring that, uh, that, that element to the, um, to the project. And um, since many of these uh, kids probably have, have never visited the beach. So we wanted to, to give this. And of course, uh, we started thinking about this ramps that can bring a little bit of risk to the, to the playground instead of these, uh, you know, typical games like swings or, or fights. So when we started thinking about that, uh, immediately this reference came to our mind, came at the left, which is the penguin pool at the London Zoo, which no longer exists. But uh, this is what I was trying to say, like, we, are, we were having this kind of idea and then this image came to our mind, and then we started working with this conceptual model. That at the end, uh, the final one conceptually was that one on the right. Um, okay, so yeah, there's a of you don't hear well, but we are close to the microphone, and it, it was working well, but I don't know. Um, yes, no, no, it's, it's the same. No, so okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on going. Uh, I think uh, they can tell us now. If they're, they're not hearing us, they can let us know. Yes, okay. Well, this is a more detailed image of the model we did for the competition, where we want, wanted to show uh, how this could work, like uh, to get a better understanding of the project. And then uh, we did this collage. So for us, the collages are really important, as I already said. It helps us to transmit some ideas that we Sometimes, uh, for example, in this in this exercise, the jury was not only architects; it was composed by people from the government, from educators, and all sorts of uh, backgrounds. So we we wanted to transmit the idea of, of our project, and so this image helped us a lot trying to 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 get the, that idea uh, and to imagine what could happen. Mm. Okay, uh, and then this again, right? The collages come back again to the, to the competition to show. We try to imagine this is a scenario that probably in a model would be impossible to to try to show. So with collage, we can imagine this this scenes or or like try to to transmit the, the idea or sometimes the soul of the project. And we we really like these images and then showing this of the final. Uh, uh, project already built inside uh, because you can see it like yeah like the same interaction that we were imagining right so yes mm, okay so this this one this next it was a competition this next um, project uh, it was a set of cabins ten cabins that were supposed to, put, to be in the um, outside of Mexico City like one hour. And we started working here really close with the plan and with the model, with the facades. Uh, they said we could only have 
I get uh, like 60 square meters per cabin. And the idea was to have 10 identical cabins because the client was uh, building the first one and then the, the next nine, they were uh, calling investors or other people to, to build it. So we could only have one project and the, the same cabin repeated 10 times. So here for us, it was a mistake just focusing on, on the plan and the model and the facades because we really like this, this project the way it was. So we have this like service car in the middle, the private area here, the public one over here. And we work a lot with the facade, uh, trying to do these different uh, uh, inclinations of the roof, of the ceiling. And then uh, what happened is that this was the first time we did this like more uh, housing uh, complex with a total of 10 units. So when we started looking at different images of how, how these uh, cabins would work all together, we, we thought it didn't work, we didn't like it. But at the same time, we were already so much into the cabin with the clients. They were they had already approved the project. They were so enthusiastic about this that idea. So we couldn't uh, went back. So we decided, okay, this is what we have. Uh, let's stay with this and let's see how we can try to uh, resolve this problem we are having. Uh, and so we this after this lots of drawings and and. So we decided, okay, what happens if we extend the, the walls of the cabin for the same inclination of the ceiling? And so these small terraces start to appear in both sides of the of the building. And and <coughs> sorry. And also at the same time, we decided not to focus, not to make 10 separate units. We decided to, to make it that make them together and um, two cabins, uh, two sets five sets of two cabins with this area in the middle, uh, like a common area where people can have like a bonfire or a barbecue. Uh, they share the space, these both cabins. And at the end, it was, for example, it was a good result. Uh, rethinking this project, uh, we think this, for example, seems that sometimes it can, you can feel almost like these cabins emerge from the earth, like uh, they, they are more arranged to the context Sometimes they even uh, mimic how to um, just like relate the context or mimic, mm -hmm. mimic the context, uh, the mountains around. So, yeah, these were some, some images we present to the clients to try to show them how these cabins would, would look, uh, even though it's not just one simple unit. And then these are some pictures of the project getting built that for us, this triangle that we added here. It uh, became probably the main characteristic of the project. These stone walls that operate kind of emerge from the from the earth. So um, yes, I think it's it's good when sometimes you you take a pause and decide, okay, let's see what we already have uh, and go back and try to figure it out. And yeah, yeah. What I, what I think definitely it's very interesting is that it's like a simple gesture that was done uh, with a drawing, like a simple triangle, like it fixed the whole the whole thing and it became like the, the main because at first it was only like um keeping this inclination and adding the triangle right but then we decided to make this like a main feature as they were saying like the, the material the stone gave it like all the strength it really needed uh and then i, I hope you hear me well and uh, then this is like a simple rooftop interven intervention with it uh at the early stages of our firm and so um the idea was this uh this rooftop didn't have any covering so you couldn't be there it was like sunny all day so uh, we started looking at as we always do we started looking at uh images and some uh thoughts that we're having and relating it to to some other things that have already been done. So we started looking at these uh, beautiful Japanese joinery images and we felt like completely, as they were saying, I, I, we always find these uh, like Eureka moments where we all uh, stop arguing uh, with different ideas and like all of us uh, are happy and in love with the, with, the, with the concept. So with this in mind, uh, this whole project is based on this simple drawing. This is like a joint that we then, after we uh, resolved it uh, once, 
we kept repeating it, right? So uh, this, uh, after doing this drawing, we decided to make a one-on-one -on -one model of this joint and how uh, it will be like it's starting from how it will uh, end in the in the in the in the ground and how it's going to 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 develop until this uh, top part that goes uh, on different directions and starts weaving uh, these roots. So this is the result uh, in which, as I told you, this simple detail that we resolved with one drawing became like the the soul of the project, and then we only repeated it and gave like an excuse for this super simple uh, roof uh, coverings, like aluminum foil uh, coverings, which are just like, as I told you, the, the skills of the project, but what we were interested in was in the system of joinery. Yeah, so this is the, the final project. Uh, as you can see, this is only like super simple and you can change it uh, different times of the year when, you, when it needs maintenance and, uh, but, what we were interested was ex in experimenting with this with this joiner. Yes, as, as you can see, uh, the detail also shown in the model we did comes repeats all the times in this uh, across the project. So yes, it, it's it's something that we kind of think uh, repeat in our project. At some point, we decided to work with this uh, specific detail or this specific piece mm -hmm. of the project or model, and then repeat it. In different uh, and adapted, and, adapted and yeah, sometimes that helps us a lot with the projects. Um, so this project is a competition we did uh, for the Mexico City government, and it this is the main square in Mexico City. It's so it's Zocalo. It's a super powerful space. Uh, as you can imagine, it's a very meaningful space in different. Uh, like socially and also politically, it's the, it's the, it's the place where all, all uh, manifestations take place and they end here. So it's a place that already has like a lot of power and a lot of meaning. Uh, so the, the the competition was to to host to make the design to host an international fair uh, that took place uh, once a year before. So uh, as, as you can imagine, as you can see the scale of the project and the millions of people that, that can gather there, uh, the, our main concern, and I think the main concern was how to give comfort in a simple way and in a cheap way, of course, to all of these people, right? And so the main, uh, the main issue here as when you visit Tokao is like how uh, sunny and how warm it, it gets and there is no like shaded area, right? So it's a very um tough like dura i don't know the, the, the specific in, in english but it's a very tough place to be uh without uh shelter so uh, uh again we we have this reference of uh this beautiful image for from francis alice in which the pole of the flag is the only uh shelter you have right so it's the only shaded area in this whole uh square and it's beautiful to see how people uh, gather every day in this uh, in this pole, and they even like start um, oh, walking yeah. and moving around like a like a sun watch uh, with it. So uh, with this in mind, we uh, we fell in love with the idea of building shade without building a roof, right? So this vertical plane uh, that could provide you with shade without taking you out of context and without trying. This was very important for us without trying to compete uh, with what's uh, already there. So we, you have all of these beautiful buildings, like historic buildings. So for us, it didn't make sense to try to make this. Uh, oh, okay, so we're going to make a better pavilion. So you <laughs> you already have everything you need uh, around you, and you only need like a super simple gesture uh, that protects you. I'm going to show you that, like a little video we have. <laughs> yeah, sorry, a plane. So, well, we can skip the video. Yeah, well, in the video, it shows how, how the shade was moving uh, in the plant, right? Uh, and here again, drawing becomes a very instrumental uh, thing for us because here, for example, it shows without lying and it helps us to the point 
uh, with the jury of how uh, how many shaded areas you, you would have throughout the day. So this is different uh, sections throughout the project, but you can see, for example, this, of course, it's like a, when, when the sun is higher, like at 12, for example, at noon, so you have all of these shaded areas, yeah, and it, it, it starts moving. And well, here's a collage, uh, and it only intended that you could see all of these like super free. It's a very um, porous and transitable project that you can walk all over around to, without like going in and going out of a place. Um, okay, so these next three projects are kind of related uh, between them. So the first one is this competition. Um, we did for an open air cinema in Cyprus. So the, the main concept behind this project was to have these uh, two volumes made uh, each from the, like the negative and the positive. So the idea was to rearrange the earth uh, or the soil. So we wanted to take out uh, the earth from here, the soil from here and rearrange it over here. So these, Two different scenarios became like uh, almost different um, experiences. At one point, you have this that is uh, underground, almost like not secluded, but yet more private with this wall for screening here the, the movies. And on the other side, you have this platform where you can have like a bar in the afternoon or like some kind of terrace or rooftop where you can uh, see like to the ocean. So for example, for us in this, in this competition, it was really important, this drawing, just to, to try to transmit this idea of, of these two scenarios happening <coughs> at the same time. So you can see it with the shadows, as you can see it here, the positive with the, with the terrace, and in the, the negative here with the underground or, or the other various uh, cinema. For, uh, also for this competition, we did these kind of uh, playful, uh, fun models. Sometimes we, all of our models probably are like uh, monochromatic or with the same material. So in competitions, we can find uh, some space or to play a little bit <clears throat> with this. So this, this model was all made with, with glitter. It had a lot of color. We tried to combined with also with some uh, background of the image and just like try to experiment different approaches to the models. And we, we didn't want that competition and um, at the same time we were finishing that, they invited us in Mexico City to this exhibition which was called uh, Pabellón de las Escaleras, which is uh, something translated like first Pabellón exhibition. So the main idea <coughs> Sorry. So the main idea here was to have uh, different architects and designers uh, working on this uh, this theme, the stairs uh, theme. So for us, this was the only uh, the exhibition took place in this this empty building that was left behind in the middle of construction. So it was like a world of, of beams and slabs and concrete columns. So when we visit the place, we find this area in the main courtyard at the center, which was the only place with uh, natural soil. So we decided to, to work with that. We were already <coughs> we were already enthusiastic. Healthy, don't worry. Yes, yeah, I'm healthy. Yes. We decided to work, uh, we were enthusiastic working with this earth or soil, so we decided to rearrange here the, the, the soil, the existing soil, to make this simple uh, geometric gesture and to make this kind of like a, a small forum or this was a place where people uh, kind of gathered together or waited while the, the visitors uh, walk around the exhibition. So yes, we did this like, in, we built it the far part with, with almost 20 students in, I don't remember, like three days. It, it served also like a workshop to to understand how soil, how you can build with the earth and soil and how it works. Uh, and then uh, a couple of months later, uh, they, this client um, gave us um, 
th this client gave us um, this commission uh, to to make a column. They said like a tower, a column to represent their six their 60 anniversary. So they asked six different architecture firms to to deliver each deliver a tower that will be uh, placed in the middle of the of the avenue where their corporate is and, and their stores and whatever. So when they asked us this, uh, they said, uh, okay, you need to have a column, you need to have, I think, 90 centimeters uh, the diameter and two and a half uh, meters tall. So we started looking at uh, in this uh, classic uh, architectural columns. And <coughs> Sorry, it's something? It's not working? No, I think you're not going to work with Nothing like things, right? No, I heard nothing. Can you hear us better? Okay, so where did uh, you want me to start from some some part or did you hear this well or? Okay, well, so then uh, the, I think this, <laughs> these things never go well. Uh, we're gonna disconnect the other audio. You already did it? But the camera, you took out the camera? No? Okay. Well, uh, okay, they are telling us it hears better, so too bad we did it in the middle of the lecture. Um, okay, so we decided to, we started working with this column and we were really attracted to this, we call it estrias, which are these lines. Uh, it's called, I think, fluting, something like that. These lines in the in the main body of the of the column. Uh, now they're saying that we have eco. No, pero creo que era el pasado. Creo que era antes de tener el cable. Ya, ya, ya. Okay, sorry. Okay, then. And so after this, uh, we started working with the with the measurements or the dimensions, the, the limits they gave to us. And we started thinking more of a totem instead of a column. Uh, instead, of a, instead of a column. So uh, the totem for us represents also something beyond, uh, represents some, uh, transmit some idea and have some like uh, spiritual kind of meaning, a meaning yes. So the client also wanted uh, his column to represent something about the brand. Um, so for us, we started working with this, this circle, this 90 centimeter circle, and we wanted to exaggerate these, these lines or these flutings. So we started to do this kind of bites to the, to the main piece. Here, of course, we decided, okay, we wanna work again with the earth because it's something that relates, relates to the site. And, and at the end, we keep we did a lot of these exercises, like to see how this this column would be. And at one point, we were interested in this form, but for example, here, the width of the material needed to be at least 15 or 20 centimeters, and here it was like five, something like that. So it didn't work. So <clears throat> here, the restrictions. Um, make us like above the, the like the drawings we were making and trying to see how they were they will they will become the final uh, piece so for this this project they i, I remember they asked us it was like an emergency like last minute uh, thing they needed to present so they asked us i remember one friday 
and we need to deliver like the next Tuesday. So we have only like five or six days to work for this conceptual presentation. So uh, again, the, the here the collage uh, is like something we can do kind of like fast, faster at least than a model. It helps us to transmit uh, some ideas, some materials uh, to give uh, the clients, which of course they weren't architects, uh, the, the main idea we we're trying to, to transmit. Uh, and then we want to show we wanted to show you these images where the like the this simple drawing to the drawing became like almost extruded and became like the how do you call it like formwork framework like formwork. the simbra it became yes like the formwork of the of the project uh, itself so here uh, it started with the with the, the base of the of the column and then uh, working with the like working with the earth to, to build it. This is the, the project already in the site. Uh, and yes, as, as I already told, we, we didn't want to bring an exterior or a different element to the to the site. So we, we decided to work with what we already have there, which was uh, vegetation and landscape and the soil. So we decided to go in a similar uh, tone, uh, like palette. the one, yes, the same palette as the one we already have in the um, in the site and even though this was a really simple project uh, we we wanted to give this kind of like zebra accent uh, mm -hmm. yes like mixing these layers of <coughs> of soil and at the end make it like also have like this some sort of background or uh, depth mm -hmm. right um yeah. um this this one uh, it is one of the last ones. Uh, this is a competition with it for a school for a kindergarten in Mozambique, uh, and so we started working. This is uh, this, this was a plot. It was like a very regular plot, and of course one of the main uh, issues uh, with this was the weather and the the conditions of the sun of the shades. Again, uh, we were trying to give this uh, like very comfortable space and trying to adjust. We uh, another thing we like to work with it's uh, grid, and here the grid uh, faces the the south side, which is in in that hemisphere what what you are trying to to look for. So we started with this grid, and we started like uh, placing the program and playing with this little uh, like labyrinth sort of uh, stuff. And after that, uh, we we thought it was nice, but. Uh, found it like super uh, serious and very uh, very straight. So we started playing with the model and like adding these little curves to it and how how the curves became the main uh, again uh, out of a drawing out of a simple drawing. This was done of course first in paper and out of a simple drawing uh, became become like the whole project right. So you have these little curves that start adapting at, and start playing and grow with uh, each little space. Uh, and then this, uh, with this idea, we remember this beautiful uh, Aldo Van Eyck's project in, in Amsterdam and how uh, we, we thought it was great how to like the superposition of orthogonal shapes and orthogonal roofs with uh, curves and like more natural things gave, gave way to all of these like little uh, spaces where you felt uh, completely like hugged uh, and like completely safe uh, from the exterior. So uh, that gave way to this, uh, this plan uh, in which you can see exactly what we were talking about with this diagram, how the curve, like the same gesture uh, repeats uh, all across the project, but it adapts and it plays uh, with it. So for example, you have this little, uh, this bigger courtyard where uh, adults and parents can wait and it's like a filter to, to the other um, spaces where children are. So you have this, uh, like this walking, this, uh, I don't know the name in English, but. Um, and then the same curve, uh, it's like accompanying the, the classrooms in a smaller way and gives way to a super private and like uh, intimate uh, little courtyard. And then uh, here it repeats, but it's of course it's bigger and it's uh, accompanying like a, like the dining room area and the multi-purpose area, and it culminates with this uh, like bigger, bigger <laughs> curve where you have like the, the main playground, like with 
uh, little games and, and stuff. So all throughout the project, it's uh, adapting and like playing uh, with measurements. And here is an image. And again, uh, we are trying to work with the same material and how it, this is like a very soft uh, idea of how it's going to like accompany kids uh, throughout their way through school and also give uh, us for the way it is placed um, on the, like with the north facing the other side, it gives shade uh, to all these little, uh, I see just like little hallways yes. that become also places to play, right? Yes, and th this is the, the final project we're gonna show you. Uh, oh, for this, uh, for this one, the client asked us to make, uh, again, this was in Mexico City, a rooftop. They asked us to make this, uh, this cover. And we didn't want, in this time, we didn't want to work with, with wood. Uh, we want to work with something uh, heavier. So we started to thinking about these kind of slabs or this stone. Uh, and here the client was uh, this uh, guy, uh, more like a, he was like the director of this gallery in Mexico City. So he was more open to experiment stuff and trying different stuff. He didn't want, of course, also a, a regular pergola. So the first um, here idea was, okay, we, we want to work with these labs that are almost like 60 per 40 centimeters, uh, something like that. So how are we, we are going to uh, elevate these stones, no? As, so at one moment, we decided to, to, to make this drawing just to see, okay, so we can, if, if it could work like with this, this is uh, screwing the, the slab into the structure in the, the upside behind the slab. Uh, but yes, of course, in drawing, everything works. So at one moment, we decided to, to make this like kind of prototype uh, of how it will carry the piece. So we, we made this with this um, steel disc and, and the, the stone we were thinking to use that has a perforated, here you can see a small hollow circle in the center. And yes, for, for us, it was like, as you said, like the Eureka moment, like if Juan Luis, that it's more strength than I am, but if he can pull it up, uh, of course, this steel structure will, will uh, pull it also. So this is like the drawing, the, as, as we told you, like sometimes we have this repetition, we decided we work with this one specific detail, and then we repeat it. 36 times to have these uh, almost floating pieces above you and all the structure will be beneath. So you almost only see like these two columns. Uh, um, okay, and then yes, these are the, some of the images of the project. As, as I said at the beginning, we didn't wanna show you like all the images of the project. So we choose most two of, of all of the projects. So yes, this is a, Final result, uh, these are brass discs that uh, screw to the top of the structure. You almost don't see the, the structure and something that is important as, as we already work in the competition, in the, the competition we got selected for the, for the Zocalo where we did this kind of like uh, shadow rocks or shadow carpets. Uh, then also in the competition, you'll just show you the Flor de Mana, how these shadows, these curved shadows keep moving through during the day. And then in this project, uh, something really uh, interesting for us happens that even though we are only building a surface, at the same time, you almost feel like you're also being some building, sorry, something underneath, like on the ground. And these shadows uh, appear and disappear through the day, uh, uh, of course, responding to the clouds. And sometimes they disappear and sometimes they start moving. Well, during the day they move uh, to the wall. So it's almost like, a, um, I don't want to say a show, but it's almost if you spend there like too many times, too many times there, you can see how they, how it evolved the project. It's in, con in content, constant movement, sorry. Um, and that's it. So thank you very much, Palmer Studio, um, for this great and interesting lecture. Oops, they can still see me, yeah. Um, 
So, I'm just setting up now the new interview frame. Sorry everyone about the audio thing, but we managed to shoot up a new satellite and now it worked and people are writing, yay, it works. Um, so please, dear people of the internet, if you have any questions already, um, just let us know in the comment sections below. You will soon see us, just a second. And, um, and you can ask a question to Diego and Ilse. So um, maybe I start with the first question. Um, where do I have my question? I need to find my secret paper with the <laughs> question. Um, yes, so. So, um, yeah, maybe we'll start from the beginning and the question of how you two, um, or like how you four actually met. Did you meet at, stu um, in, at university or at a club or did you all were born on the same day and met in the hospital? When you were born, <laughs> actually, we were I, actually, we were born in the same hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Different years, of course, but yes, we 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 studied together. Van uh, Ilse and Regina studied together from the first year of architecture school, and then Juan Luis and I uh, came uh, to the same school it's like little workshops in in the faculty of architecture so we came to we start studying also in the same workshop with them so yes from the second from the third semester we've been studying together that's been almost uh, nine years or ten years something like that yes yeah and then uh, I think we started uh, well we started working uh, in teams for the school projects and we started uh, understanding each other and the way we worked and then we started doing competitions uh because that's a thing we, we we are really into and i think that was it like from the competitions uh we decided uh that we worked well together and yeah and and your very specific style or like way of drawing was this always from the beginning did you start like this at university or did this so sort to of say develop over the years um, no no I, I don't think so no in university we were like <laughs> trying really hard to make renderings and try and failing at the same time uh they are if you if i would uh show them to you you uh they are very horrible like or intent of renderings <laughs> um and yeah i think it was like a curiosity we of course this is not like we are not the first uh office and to do the, to do those, those sort of uh, drawings, uh, but we already uh, admired and looked at uh, other offices that did them, and so uh, it all started with a project uh, in Oaxaca, like in a colonial house uh, that had like the walls super um, eroded and like in different, like a very weird texture that you could not find in the internet, of course, and it was like uh, like suicide trying to render that. So we started like uh, superposing different textures in Photoshop and that project was the first one that you could say it has this specific style and the, the reason was that of course we like that sort of representation and we were looking at it, but also because it was impossible for us to render it and we thought it looked very, uh, very nice uh, Photoshopped. Yes, and, and also something that is important during this whole process is um, this, this, these images help us when presenting a project because if you show a render to a client, you need to make a good render and it, a good render almost needs to have everything kind of sort, sort of um, resolved. So you need, almost, uh, Kasi, Kasi, you, you need to have all, like the curtains resolved or which kind of floor you're gonna use or the color of the walls or whatever. So with these collages, we can have this uh, these approximations of what we would like to 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 be like the project to be, but we are in these early stages of the project, and we are still working and resolving. And as you said, we are a small firm right now. We have only, we're only six people working right now in in the office, so we don't have that many times. So we have thanks. We have a lot of um, uh, projects right now, uh, thankfully. But uh, so sometimes we don't have the the time like to to get 
show into the project. So these images can can make a little gesture, as this one, the first one, uh, Ilse show at the beginning, can can make a little gesture to the client and show it him like, okay, so my building is gonna look uh, something like this. We know we wanna work with green concrete, uh, but we're not sure about the, the round column right now. We are not sure about the slab on the top, the, the rooftop, so, but it gives an idea. We don't know the handrails design, but of course the client can, can have uh, just a general idea of the project. And that's why render, sorry, collage works so, so well for us. Um, something that I never can get my head around is this thing of post-digitalism. And I was hoping you can help me. Um, what does post-digitalism mean to you? And would, because you talk about yeah. renderings and collages and are you post-digitalists? Oh no, I, well, honestly, uh, that word, I, I do not uh, quite uh, understand. I don't know, because I, I don't think it's post-digital because it's very digital. Uh, I would love to tell you that this is all like textures that I grab from the, from the forest or something and then paste them together. And that, that would be, I, I imagine like a very beautiful result, but, uh, I mean, I, I think it's just a word that they are starting to use to to, uh, to name this sort of representation. But uh, we're we're very digital, actually. <laughs> Great. And um, we already have the first question coming in. So for all of you into internet, just write the question in, and we will ask them. And um, Itzel Rivera asks, "What is the meaning behind Palma?" Behind Palma? Okay. <laughs> well, it's not, uh, we, we, of course, we can invent something uh, like more elaborated, but it's not. We started, have, we had like a lot of names before Palma. Each each uh, project we deliver or each quote we, we present to a client had a different name. So at one moment. Each one more terrible than the last one. Yes. And at one moment we decided we went a small name, uh, something that like a word that reminds something uh, nice. nice or for us, Palma is the palms. We, we, at some point we were planning on naming ourselves patio or something like that, because we really enjoy having uh, those kind of spaces in the projects we did at that moment. But at the end, yes, I think we decided to, to go with Palma and people like sometimes they said it, if it's related with, with the palm of the hand or the palm of the tree. And we said, yes, it well, can it can be, yes. It can be that, but it's something like, it's a word we like. And yeah, it's just a word. That's it. <laughs> and um, so speaking about, because you're also a young office and you sort of went away from this rendering craziness and like go into like sort of a bit into the materiality, YouTube user Gargamel Gaga is asking, <laughs> How do you see the importance of the details and materials in your project? The details and the... Okay, well, I think that's something that if you're building a project, it's the essence of the project. Like, of course, we already did, for example, this first house uh, in Sayulita. And we, we did all the, uh, these drawings and this technical drawings and sometimes uh, some details kind of like, uh, how do you say it, like sort of sound that just slip uh, before, before our eyes. So we need to correct a lot of stuff during the construction. So for us right now, we are like, <clears throat> the four of us started, started, sorry, work in this, previously before founding Palma, we work in these offices where uh, we were used to having all of these drawings made, like these executive drawings for the, for these projects, but sometimes these drawings, uh, they never change, happen. they never happen, or they change at the moment in the, in the construction site. So we started working and in a place like Sayulita where it's like really like more informal, informal casual, imagine like this uh, beach town. So uh, don't don't think about it like this really like focus or, or serious <laughs> workers over there. So, so at one point we decided we should focus on the important things or, or these details. So 
that's what we are uh, doing right now. We actually uh, have uh, Juan Luis is over there in Cerrita right now, and we have uh, another guy working with us, Gerardo, which is mainly focused on that, like to transmit these main ideas, these projects we're designing, and we solve all, all these kind of details uh, at the, almost at the same time as it's being built, because as I already told, we have like too many projects right now that we don't have that many time to keep uh, drawing these executive drawings. Uh, yes. <laughs> So um, the next one is um, from Instagram, Anna Lorema asking, um, since you are apparently and understandably sort of idols, maybe for students and um, to quite some of them um, is asking, what would you recommend for an architecture student about to graduate, about gaining experience, how to get an internship or intern international office? Or do you say... It, it doesn't matter to start your own office. I think I think that's it, right? Like competitions, probably. Um, well, yeah, I, I, I recommend. I, I think it's very important. Well, for us, it was very important to find people that you work well with. It doesn't matter if you're going to like start a firm, but it's going to help you like uh, understand like so many different uh, abilities. And as like for the rest of your life, you're going to work uh, with many people right so i think we're uh, understanding each other and working with each other and understanding that you're not gonna know and be the best at everything i think that's one of the best advices uh also uh what Diego was saying entering competitions uh confronts you with uh your abilities and confronts you with your talent for example and how much you can do and also with time time frames like time managing, which is it's completely uh, one of the most important things in architecture, like time managing. And other thing I think is like to look at everything, like to look at the most things that you can, but try to not just like uh, get information all the time without like trying to digest it. I think like trying to slow down and like read yeah, read stuff look at references but understand them not only like uh consume them i think that's another advice i, I would give yes the, the the for us the competitions were like really important from the beginning because it's a way it's the excuse to to make you your to have work because at some point when you are starting to work and uh, even though if you keep your still studying school uh, it gives you like okay so i need to find something i need to work on something and Probably at that moment, uh, project commissions are not going to come to you. Maybe renovation. I also uh, um, recommend doing it. Uh, but yes, competitions give you this opportunity to, to start having your own projects and having this portfolio that will help you at some point to, to show to this potential client. And uh, what I was saying about the, the renovations or reformations is it's important because uh, you get also a lot of experience from that. We, we our first projects were working with familiars, uh, parents, uh, sorry, uh, relatives, uh, that they ask us to to make the renovation of their kitchen or for their terrace or of something like that. And of, of course, sometimes you, you think there are small projects, but those small projects can help you a lot because you are actually building or doing something uh, materialize it. So you need to start working with the 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 builders and with the yes like these materials that probably you only have done it like concrete in the in the renderings or in the, the collages but like get real so so yes get real on it so <laughs> so okay that's it yes. perfect yeah this already answers a question that sort of our team in vienna had to you about um because you have a lot of projects already it seems and a lot of jobs to work on so it really all started with family and friends as you said with what family um, and friends yeah. no. family and friends yeah we we for example have these uh if you go into our folder you can see all of the projects and like there are like 20 of them which are for the same person and they never happened he never paid us but 
uh, I mean, he gave us like a lot of uh, experience <laughs> and like how, like that's terrible. He never, kept, never do it. Always, he kept us always, busy like, yeah. <laughs> for a lot of time without paying. Yeah, but so we have these weird first uh, projects. For example, this, this house in Sayulita, the first one we built uh, came after we did like a, they wanted, this, this person uh, wanted his bathroom turned into a closet. No, his closet turned into a bathroom. His balcony turned into a closet and his bathroom to be remodeled. Something, something like weird. Yes. And yeah, but so we did that and we uh, we were like, ah, we don't want to do that, blah, blah, blah. But then he like recommended us to this uh, first, uh, in, like the first house that we built uh, in Sayulita. So I think it's funny how life works and you should say yes to everything uh, as long as it's, uh, something that you feel comfortable with and you think it's going to give you some value. Okay, good. So I have to start looking who needs something and then start with friends and family. And yeah. again, all the people on the internet, thank you so much for your questions. There are many questions coming in and also right from where you are asking these questions from, from where, in what quarantine of what part of the world. Um, so we can really get this world turning around. Um, yeah, from YouTube, Julia Fla is asking maybe the most secretive question ever. Which programs are you using to make your collage illustrations? It's all right. We, we love those uh, people ask us all the time, like which programs? It's, it's the same programs. It's uh, okay. So the process is we model in SketchUp. Then we sometimes use B-Ray to have uh, for example, in this one, uh, we use V-Ray because uh, we wanted a little furniture there and the windows, like a little more detail. And so we render it like the base, uh, like the first layer. And then on Photoshop, we post produce it and use different, uh, different things. We use different textures that we have worked over time. For example, this grass, we already worked with it for another project. So we repeat. And yeah, we start adding these little uh, plants and these uh, persons all over it. So it's not like a specific uh, magic software. It's basically SketchUp, Photoshop, and AutoCAD. That's oh. it, yes. So it's no big secret, but still the way you no. do it. We actually have a online course, so it's not, it's not a secret at all. Like a lot of people are, are like doing that course right now. And, Yes, they are learning how to do this. It's images. very simple. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that course, I recently got an Instagram ad from you guys on my Instagram feed about like these courses that you can do. And um, so there seems to be quite some interest for this new kind of drawing craft. Yeah, definitely. I think there's like a big interest uh, in it. And I, what I think it's nice about it is that uh, it can be super personal. Like it's not like a rendering that you, uh, I mean, the, of course there are these uh, people that do better renderings than others, but with this, I think as it's only like a tool, it's not a specific software, it's very personal. So once you learn uh, like the basics on how to do it, it can go like many, many different ways. It can, you can start working with uh, like specific types of, uh, for example, skies, or you can, I mean, it, it's very different from one uh, office to another. So if you look at, for example, you, you had Fala on your, on your previous lecture and it had nothing, uh, at, 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 it's the same technique, but it has nothing to do with our drawings. It's very personal. And I think that's very nice. It's very beautiful that you have all this space to create completely different um, images. Yes, sorry, I'm just trying to get the Instagram feed back up, but we're still on YouTube and Facebook. And um, so next question from Ioana Barashif. Do you prefer drawing by hand over computer rendering? Well, I think we always start with uh, drawing by hand all of our projects. It's when we started the office, I remember we we storage all these drawings from, from all the meetings in this um, folder. At one point it became like <laughs> yes, we don't know where to we don't know 
we don't have space to put them. So we decided, okay, no. And, and of course, we're not like this really talented uh, yeah. artist. So it's more like to transmit an idea. But yes, all of these projects for us start working with the, like everyone of, when we start, every time we start a project, the four of us got together, we decided, okay, we, what is the commission, what they are asking us to do. And then we, we have little discussions and we draw on this table we had in the middle of the office. So we have these sketches, we keep like working and then uh, each, each of us go back to his, to his place and keeps working on some ideas and bring it back. And all this happens uh, a lot of times in uh, hand drawing. At some point we kind of like evolve like to the, of course the computer and to sketch up or to these really fast models, these board more uh, cartoon, um, cardboard. cardboard models, yes, to show or to try to represent this idea. But this collage for us is like the way to show our project, our projects, the way to transmit an idea in a competition or to clients. But of course, uh, yeah, it's but essential. I, the, I, I, the I, don't, I don't think it's like one over the other. Um, for, for example, none of us, uh, sometimes, but it's very like sporadic. We don't do like this, uh, uh, these perspectives, uh, like hand-drawn, per super uh, fancy perspective, perspectives where we're not like the best uh, artist, <laughs> the four of us. So it's not like one over the other. I, I, I'm not like, I don't really relate to that thing where, uh, no, the computer is super impersonal and only if you draw by hand, you're gonna get like, uh, in, like in real touch with the project. No, I think it's, it has like different stages and it has different qualities and it can give you different uh, benefits. Maybe I ask you a question. I might ask all of these offices that we have in this lecture series because they are very much about these collages and sort of depicting like an atmosphere. So also to, to you the question, do you think your collages are cute? <laughs> I saw the one uh, from Panada. Uh, they said they weren't cute, they were they were joyful, right? Uh, yeah, but I, yeah, think, I yeah. think cute is a bad, bad word. Like a lot of people tell us, ah, it's so cute. Uh, uh, for me, it's not like a bad word. I mean, it's, yeah, probably. It's like the colors are like some sort of like pastel colors. It's not intended to be cute. It's not like a, like a picture of a teddy bear, <laughs> but yes, it has like some joy in it and like some freshness to it. It's not like super dark. Uh, the representation or something i mean yeah it's probably cute yes i think it's for example right now we did um these old collages that are in our instagram or or that some some of the ones we show you today in the presentation and uh, they are also related to this weather weather specific projects in sayulita which is like this i mean the middle of the jungle this open you you can see the ocean so Yes, of course, that seems kind of like cute, no? If you can say it like that. But uh, for example, we just finished uh, this competition uh, like two weeks ago, something like that. That the images we don't have it on this presentation, but the images were more kind of like dark because it was this enclosed space. Um, it, it had like this, uh, how do you say, like the atmosphere of more, more like poetic atmosphere. Uh, well, at least I think and. Um, if you see those those images, that probably you're gonna show them uh, later when we have the results of the competition. Uh, those, for example, for me, don't doesn't resemble anything cute. cute. Yes, but yes, cute. It's not a bad word. So yes, they're cute. <laughs> so um, let's talk about very cute things. Clients. Shada Hatem is asking, do you have difficulties with clients when using this kind oh, of presentation? Yeah. Difficulties? Yes, oh, yeah, difficulties instead of realistic renderings. Oh, yes, of course, we always, uh, we, we also do renderings. It's not like this fantastic world where, where everyone loves uh, these, uh, these representations. We are often uh, made uh, like, like 
I don't know if that's the word. Yeah. Forced? <laughs> yeah, forced to forced. do some renderings, which are honestly very, very bad. And well, trying to get someone to do your renderings is super expensive. So we do them and they turn out terrible, but the clients love them. So yeah, it's not like we only uh, do collages. No, it's when, when, when we feel the client is open to it, we love it and we use it. And when they are not open, we do renderings. Yeah, sometimes they want to see their render from the first day, like, okay, where is my rendering? And it's like, we try to push them, like, as no, far as Also, they, sometimes they call the break a rendering. Like, I, I'm sure all of you have, or some of you have gotten the question, like, how much would it be uh, to do a rendering with you? <laughs> it's like a rendering or a project? <laughs> But that means sort of because your renderings you don't show on your Instagram, for example, or so like you clearly want to have this image as like this collage driven office. Oh yeah, we don't show them because we don't like them. Yes, it's like that. It's like our sketches. We don't show our sketch. There are some offices that, for example, here in Mexico, there are some offices that are, they're really talented in hand drawing and they have these beautiful drawings and it's part of their uh, narrative and of their show, showing the way they show their their portfolio or their, or their office. For us, uh, that doesn't work, rendering so, neither. So yes, we, we are, we really like these this three, three things and it's something we are really comfortable with. Uh, like these plants uh, to the drawings where we can almost like give an idea of what could happen or imagine these scenarios. scenarios. And of course the models, uh, we really like doing these uh, nice models for the projects and but yes. I, I also think it's uh, there are some projects where the client doesn't want to see collages or he doesn't even like know that we make because we we feel he's not open to that kind of representation but we also do them because we like to do them and because we think it's like an important tool for the project so as we already done them uh, we show them We have a question on YouTube from Macy Lawlin, um, who is sort of asking about the management of your transition from architecture school to practicing on your own. So you already talked, you had the clients, friends and family, but like, how did you learn um, how to do things correctly? Oh, so I, I, all of us worked, I think from more or less this, well, Dio, Dio worked in, in another- Dio is, Dio is old. <laughs> Dio is, <laughs> 10 years older. Uh, no, so... <laughs> only five, five years older, five years. No, so he started working since like first year of architecture in another office. And then all of us started working in like six semester more or less. And then since six semester till we got out of school and more or less two more years. And then uh, we all uh, left our practices in different times. Uh, so it was like a, like a <laughs> completely leap of fate. Um, and then when we le left our uh, previous practices, we, we got together and started working first from home with these little small uh, projects, these little small rooftop interventions. And then it was like a big leap. Uh, one of our partners, Juan Luis, went to Sayulita to work and uh, with his uh, wife, Melissa, and in there, I think we found like this uh, amazing place where there, there was a need for projects because in Mexico City, there are like a thousand offices and there is like little space and everything is uh, a lot of paperwork and a lot of money and everything is expensive. So it was like we, we felt like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna break, like this is not gonna work. And then Sayulita was like this relief uh, where we found other, other ways of working, I think. Yes, and, and for me also it's important what everybody kind of mentioned about uh, working in getting some experience from, from architecture firms. But uh, I would recommend not, uh, of course you have like these big name offices where everyone wants to work at, at some point. I remember I had one in, <laughs> in Portugal when we were uh, studying abroad over there. So uh, yes, there are, 
So at some time you kind of like become like a fan, no? Like this fandom of these offices, and you want to work with that guy and with that office. Or, but for I'm me, but for me, it's more important than to to work that find an office or find a firm that where you can grow or where you can have these uh, experiences and get related and responsibilities. responsibilities and get into the design or into doing model work. Because at these big firms, if you go to Japan to work for these uh, renowned firms, probably you're going to be uh, doing, uh, organizing the files in the computer or doing or serving coffee or yes, and you will not get experience for that. Of course, it would look nice in your, in your CV and your resume, but if you really want to get experience, I recommend uh, approaching to a more medium or small firm where you can have this uh, real experience as an architect. Mm -hmm. Speaking of growing and getting bigger and bigger, let's talk about the thing that grows the biggest at the moment, which is Corona. And of course, like the question for all of us, especially to you, many people ask this, um, Shapeshifters or also Narul Hamis is asking, um, what are your thoughts on the effects of Corona, especially you as a small architecture practice? And what's the current situation uh, in Mexico? <laughs> like sens sensitive subject. Um, well, well, I think we're trying to take it day by day. And yeah, that week we had two projects, uh, not stopped comp completely, but like paused at least, which is like a huge impact for us because we're a small office. Uh, there are some, we have some ongoing uh, projects that are actually building like, building right now in Sayulita where uh, they, they haven't prohibited construction yet, but we also feel responsible uh, in trying to find the best way for everyone that worked there to, to, make it, to make it work and without compromising their, their safety. Uh, so we have that on, that on one side. And there's uh, like another part which has been like amazing, which is that we have this uh, domestic uh, course uh, that of course, as people are in their homes, they are making this more and more. So this is like a little bit of a lifesaver <laughs> for us right now. Um, so uh, yes, and it's also very, it's been very nice uh, with Domestica to be able to, because you can communicate with people that are taking the course and we always get like these amazing uh, people that write to us and tell us like we are taking this and we are like being creative and we're like enjoying this time uh, making this. So I, I think at least for me that has been uh, great and I feel like very uh, humbled and nourished by that, those, those commentaries. I mean, it's super interesting to see that sort of you see the field of architecture much bigger. It's also like teaching and sort of not only teaching sort of like an old professor at a university, but digitally and online. Um, let's maybe talk about also generally the architecture industry. What do you think will sort of change or when we come out of this Corona crisis, will it be something different? Or what do you well, wish first, to see? Right now in Mexico, for example, I think in Mexico City, like constructions have already stopped. <laughs> yes, but, but right now they are already stopped. So I think, uh, yes, at one, we don't, we don't want to say that, of course, yes, because it's something we do. Like we we do these projects, we build these uh, yes, these buildings or these yes projects. But uh, I don't want to say that yes, architecture needs to change, and now it's time to, like to go in another direction and maybe start imagining new ways. Yes, of course, that's like part of it and like a research but of course the demand of people needing a place to live it will all, uh, always exist yes we think uh, it's important to to maybe not only start doing buildings from scratch so every time we have the opportunity to work on a project uh, it's like to how to say it, yeah. like to adapt or to reform this existing place for us that's it's really important it's, it's interesting because all this corona also relates with this environmental crisis and for us uh, building is has a lot of that not right he, he has a lot of uh, responsibility like our our um, our gremio our our field yes has a lot of 
responsibility with with building uh, in, in that whole thing. So it's, yeah, it's I, 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 I think as you said, maybe when you said like going bigger and bigger, maybe you were uh, relating to this uh, like whole speech in the Triennale about how like big road and like stop doing more and more and having these huge offices. And uh, for example, for us, we're very comfortable with small scale. We're very comfortable with adapting. We're very uh, used to like trying to make the most out of something. Uh, we have, we are not working right now with like huge uh, developments. We are not, that. not our intention. Uh, we like like keeping our office small, like intimate, uh, which I think it's nice. And also finding these other ways of being architects, right? So for example, this course, online course, it's another way of being an architect. And it's not only, only uh, drawing and drawing and drawing and then building towers, blah, blah, blah. So we're, that's like super uh, old fashioned and, and tired. Uh, so there's this many uh, uh, like little things and little uh, slips of the way, which I think are super important and super interesting to find ways to be uh, what you are without, uh, going bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, speaking of the online um, classes that you do, we just got a compliment for you from Vetam Al Zahrani, who said, the course is amazing. I just finished it and now working on my graduation project. Thank you. And then he does the emoji three times. Uh, thank Great. you, thank you also. But we don't know where you're from, Ritham. So please always write in your questions where you're from so we can sort of send out the appreciation all around the world. Um, yes, I think so far we don't have any further questions anymore. Um, guys, thank you so much for um, sharing your thoughts and sharing your work to us here in Europe and all the other continents where people are watching. Um, and yes, thank you audience for watching from all over the world and make sure to all follow what Palma is doing next and all do their classes if you want to graduate and not stay in university forever. Ah, but, um, <laughs> Mr. Al-Zahrani who said thank you, thank you, thank you is from Saudi Arabia. So he sends <laughs> greetings over the whole African continent and Atlantic Ocean over to you. And thank you so much for watching this. Yes, thank you and sorry for the technical problems. I saw la last week lecture and I like you didn't have audio at the beginning. So we we got prepared. We <laughs> we ordered this other microphone from Amazon. We did. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, <laughs> yeah this is not the, the, the real future. I mean we have <laughs> we have a pandemia, but we, we cannot make a microphone work. <laughs> But I guess like after more and more weeks of this whole Corona crisis, we all be like IT experts and then we'll all be yeah. able to do <laughs> robots. Yes, thank, you. thank you very much for having us and for the invitation. It was a uh, really nice showing our work. We, we actually also got like canceled, like the next lectures we're going to give in the next uh, couple of months. So it's nice to keep showing our work uh, all across the, the world, not only like to this specific uh, audience yeah great yes and then this lecture will also stay online for all of you people who want to re-watch it and sort of study every single drawing that Palma did you can do this and um, I also see Narul Karmis is also watching from Malaysia running a small practice wow. and my last words I'm just reading um, a comment from Raul Chacaltana, it's in Spanish. I don't know Spanish, but I will just say it anyway. Sus técnicas de representación son una tremenda inspiración para mi trabajo. Ah. Ah, thank you so much, Raúl. Gracias, Raúl. Thank you for reading that in Spanish. <laughs> right, so thank you all so much. Greetings to Mexico and greetings to the rest of the world. This was the second Quarantine Life Lecture Series and join us for the third one exactly today in one week and it's going to be Point Supreme from Greece and, uh, and the Facebook event will be out soon. So let's look over to Greece in one week. Thank you very much for joining and good night, good morning and have a nice lunch. Bye. 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 Bye.